All right, so today's topic is score more in Q4. This started out with like seven different things and now it's morphed into about 50 or 60 different tips and tactics to improve your Amazon ads. So not all of these are gonna be applicable to everybody here, but I'm sure that after this presentation, you'll have a couple of tips that can help improve your business. So uh, quick question, how many people are using Amazon advertising in here? Raise your hands. Okay, so most people, very good. So that, this should be applicable to most people in the room then. Cool, so this is me. I am a recovering physical therapist. No. Yes, I, that's me doing a senior fitness test back in 2014 while I was learning about Amazon and then Amazon gave me the freedom to, I mean, I love working with seniors, but I love e-commerce much better. So my name is Mike Segari. That, that's me right there at the size 16 feet. And uh, yeah, and you know, e-commerce has been a blessing, so I'm truly excited to be here. I started my business in 2015, and then advertising was the way that we really scaled our business. So figured why not start a software, and that's where PPC Entourage came about. Grew that up, I've been studying PPC ever since. So we're gonna take the last six years of tips and strategies for Q4, put it into one presentation, and recently we were acquired by Carbon6 and I could not be any happier to be part of this amazing team. So super excited to be here. Um, a lot of great stuff to come. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start with the basics. So this first set of slides is gonna be like some basic stuff that you might've heard before. But first off, important to go back to last year and reanalyze your data from last year. Take a look at what worked and what didn't work, which campaigns performed really well, which, which products performed really well, which ad types perform pretty well? You wanna look at all of this. Which creative worked really well? Because there's gonna be things that work great and there's gonna be things that don't work great. And this is also a good thing to do at the end of the year, the Q1, to go back and look at Q4 this year and say, okay, what actually did work? Take notes. This way, when you go into Q4 next year, you'll be much more prepared. All right, so now you could also go back and look at the search term uh, reports if you have access to that. If you've been downloading your search term reports, you can do that. If you have a software tool like PPC Entourage, you can go back to last year and look at all the data to see what did work last Q4. If you don't have access to that and you have, brand, uh, if you're, you have a brand on Amazon, you could do the ASIN level search query performance report. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this in depth um, later on in the presentation, but this is really important because there's just so much information that Amazon has recently been uh, giving us on an ASIN level. Like in the last couple of weeks, they opened this up. So you can go in and you can see things like what happened last December for this particular ASIN. And you can go through how many searches for certain search queries, the uh, total impressions, what brand share your actual ASIN got, all the way down to add to cart share and purchase share, which is like really super important information. So they're gonna show you the top 1000 keywords. And in there, you're gonna see there's lots of interesting things you can find out about the keywords that you're, you're ranking for. You could see like browse based keywords versus high intent keywords versus keywords that are more giftable keywords when you dive into this. So we'll, we're gonna be talking a lot about this today. All right, back to the basics. So next thing, know your goals. Try not to go into Q4 just like willy nilly, you know, go in there knowing what your goals are. Do you wanna get more brand awareness? Do you want to maximize profits? Do you wanna clear your inventory? Do you wanna sell at break even? It's important to have a goal, not just on a brand level, but also on an individual ASIN level to make sure that you can match your goals with your KPIs. So obviously, if you're looking to maximize sales, you wanna maximize your ROAS, you wanna reduce your ACOS. If you wanna get profitability, you wanna reduce your ACOS. If you're looking for brand awareness, and I'll, we'll go over a lot of brand awareness plays today, then you're gonna to wanna to do more impressions and new to brand sales. So like I said, your entire catalog, Go through each one and see what is the goal for this particular ASIN and how can I maximize my Q4 as, you, as you're going. Okay, so this is like just gonna, I'm gonna run through this, but this is such an important slide because one of the key ingredients to maximizing your profitability with Amazon advertising is improving your click-through rate and your conversion rate. It's 50% of the battle. We wanna get that as high as possible. So you could do things like adding coupons, obviously that makes you more competitive. Adding badges, and I'll show you an example of how much bigger that makes your listing look compared to some of your competitors. Um, seasonal creative, I'm not gonna go too in depth in that today, but there's a lot that you could do with seasonal creative. You don't have to go nuts with it. 
something as simple as like a bow or holly or a Christmas tree, something like that. Of course, we have premium A plus content, which is massive, and it opens up the floodgates to looking like a much bigger brand. Um, I believe you know you can get access to this now. Uh, at the end of the month, they give access to uh, new sellers, but you have to have like a couple different things. I think it's like 15. Um, you have to have 15 requests for A plus content and something else. I forgot. But I would definitely try to get access to premium A plus content. And a brand story. Brand story. That's right. Okay, copy tweaks. Of course, you can make some copy tweaks to, let's say, your bullet points and stuff like that. And then, of course, the brand story, which we'll go over an example of that. So check this out. This is the difference of having badges and not having badges. Um, obviously, one's going to attract more attention because it's much bigger. I learned this lesson like when I first started selling. All I did was maximize the image of my product, and it just like blew up in sales. Advertising worked a lot better. So if you can do that, now this is a mobile view, check out the competition, check out the difference. It makes a huge difference. And here's an example of seasonality. Now this is a courtesy of sellwinconsulting.com. I found this um, and they had a whole blog article of brands doing it well and brands like not so doing it so well. So here's an example of McCormick did really well. They had like four or five different examples of just making it simple um, and adding some seasonal highlights to your, your storefront pages and also to your uh, product detail pages and things like posts as well. Here's another example of Hershey's and you can see the before and after. This is December versus January. So like, you know, obviously they're making some tweaks and changes to help improve their conversion rate, um, driving traffic to the storefront probably with uh, different types of ads. If you want a good example of premium A plus content, go to Bose and you can see what's possible. You can see the uh, width and all the different types of uh, you know, videos that you can add in there, lots of things you can do. Um, definitely, they used to charge a lot of money for this, and now it's open to sellers. Here's an example of just swapping out the, uh, this is for Halloween, I couldn't find a good example for Christmas, but swapping out the, um, the brand story, the background image, to make it more, more seasonal. I knew that was gonna happen. To make it more seasonal. So this is a really simple example, they just put in that background image, and you can do the same for whatever holiday you're gonna be Approaching probably, probably Christmas holiday. All right, back to the basics. Here's another thing that just came out with uh, Amazon Accelerate. They just talked about this. Um, starting an experiment is really important. You could start that ASAP. And the cool thing about, is, about that is there's been experiment updates. So with this, you no longer have to wait like six to eight weeks um, to get results. Uh, they're going to inform you, like, if the, first off, if the test is too similar, like, let's say you're testing something, but it's, like, almost exactly like the other uh, image or whatever uh, headline, they're going to tell you if it's too similar so you could not do that test. Save time there. Then they're going to auto-publish. You have the option to auto-publish winning results. Option um, to now expand and test bullet points and product descriptions. And this is the most important one so that you don't have to wait, like, six to eight weeks before you get results you could do experiment to significance. So as soon as you know that there's a, a winning test, you can get that going and get that live. Now this is so important for conversion rate, right? I mean, this is like something that now we can do on a regular basis and we don't have to wait as long. So I checked this is live. If you go, you should be able to see this in your account. All right, um, now let's go, of course, of course thinking mobile is super important. 60% um, of sales occur on mobile. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the browsing occurs on mobile. People are on their phones and they're just browsing through. And then a lot of the actual purchases occur on desktop. So it's important to have a strategy for both. But also just know that I get into the habit myself of looking at everything through desktop because I'm just working on a desktop. But a lot of the shoppers are doing mobile and shopping on mobile. So make sure you look at yourself from a mobile lens so that should help out your advertising performance as well. All right, now this is, we're gonna talk about, about creative. Um, how many people here are doing video ads? Anybody? Cool, if you're not doing it, it's a really good idea. Um, and there's a couple of easy ways to make video ads. Now I'm not gonna claim that this is like an amazing video at all. Amazon just released this Amazon Video Builder um, the cool thing is, they're so easy to put together, even I can do it. And I did it in like 10 minutes. 
you can make these videos. The problem is some of the templates are so bad I would never even try to test them because the images are super small. So you can see here, like, look how small that image is. It's just like basically a background that looks ugly. But this one here, it's called Bell Natural. That, that from our team, we, we've kind of figured out this is the only one that we would use. We actually started testing this and it tested out really well, even compared to other more professional videos. So they're 15 second long videos, quick call to action, go from there. They are not the nicest. So we decided to make you guys um, a template on Canva. This is a little bit better. You can go, uh, we'll, I'll give you a link at the end of the presentation. And you can download this template on Canva and make a, uh, make a video using some of your images in no time. Pretty, pretty simple to, to put together. The cool thing about this is, once you start to create videos and you have ability to scale that, you can start to get more specific with those videos. And you can start to target certain search terms and put those search terms in your videos and make it more specific to the targeted audience. So the ability to scale that is important. Now these are not professional, like crazy expensive videos. Sometimes it actually sells a lot better because it doesn't look as polished. So sometimes, you know, it does make a little bit of a difference. Okay, so this is important. New update. So, uh, sponsored brand video to storefront top of search. This is really, really cool. Um, so how many people have seen this? Uh, you could make a video ad now and you could send it to top of search. You could choose a landing page instead of just an ASIN. The cool thing about this is if you go and look at the top of search placement, you're gonna see mobile ads uh, and desktop ads are gonna show up as top of search. So now this is replacing the sponsored brand, sponsored brand ads. So you're gonna get a video at the very top of search, which is really cool because now there's so many more things you can do with brand awareness and getting more, it's a different angle. You're not just going after a specific product. You could do more of a, a general brand awareness approach and drive traffic to a storefront page, which is awesome. So we're testing this out now. As you can see, you can add a video, you can add a headline, and you could even keep the product here with the, with the review star rating and you can go to, to a storefront. So highly recommend testing that out. As you know, with Amazon ads, I don't know if you all had this experience. Um, you know, the, it's usually like the, if you test it out first and you're first to get to something, it works out, it usually works out a little bit better that way. Things then t tend to get a little bit more expensive afterwards, after everyone's doing it. All right, cool. Uh, next thing is to generate unique holiday headlines. So we have something, and I'll give you guys a link to this, called the Headline Builder. Now these headlines are a little bit cheesy, but you can model them to any which way you want. And you can see there's different categories. We have holidays here, and you see something like three perfect skincare gifts shop now, give your love the gift she really deserves, the perfect frame that lasts a lifetime. Got a lot of cheese, but. Um, you, could, you could take this and, and put your search terms in there and make it uh, more applicable to your product. We also have some sponsored display ads uh, headlines as well. So this is when you're comparing your product to someone else's and you want to showcase how yours is better. These will really help to showcase uh, how your features and your benefits are better and you can use those on product detail pages. All right, so this one's pretty self-explanatory create a gift storefront page and drive traffic with sponsored brand and now sponsored brand video ads. You can see here, uh, Hershey's has done a phenomenal job of doing this. Um, you can see, you know, they've put the whole Halloween background. They have a specific page called Halloween favorites and they're driving traffic to this sponsored, this uh, storefront page. So pretty simple and straightforward, uh, not too hard to put together, but it can help to improve your results. All right, target keywords before the increase in traffic. All right, so here's, here's a look at, you know, the ramp up in sales for Christmas decorations, Amazon. And you can see that the trend starts to increase in late August, and then it starts to skyrocket towards the end of September. So getting, um, and looking at this, you know, from, a, a, from an earlier perspective, you could start to target these keywords before the big ramp up. So basically start here and not over here and identify where you have those keyword opportunities. A good way to do that is through the search query performance report. This thing is absolute freaking gold. So I wanna dive into this a little bit because you can go back to last December, like I said before, and you can see all the different search terms that you ranked for. You could see the volume, 
um, the impressions for those search terms, how many impressions you got, how many clicks you got, how many purchases you got, and add to carts. Super important. And what that's going to start to show you is just like where you have opportunity. So let's just talk about the search query performance um, ASIN view, what we know. It includes search, paid, and organic. So that, that's important because it does not include direct traffic to product pages or ASIN targeting or the widgets that show up on Amazon, like um, on, the, on the, the, the initial with the four plus star review widgets. Also, there's a 24 hour attribution on that report. That's another important thing too, because it's a small window of attribution. So it basically means that if this number has a high purchase rate within 24 hours, it has a really good high purchase intent for that keyword. So you can start to see which keywords are good, which ones are more browse based, which are more high purchase intent. And you can start to see some interesting things about your, um, about your keywords. Let me give you an example here. <coughs> this high purchase intent uh, search term you're going to notice, likely, that there's less ASINs viewed because you could actually see how many ASINs deep the search results go. You could see that there's probably going to be higher add to cart rates, higher purchase rates, lower clicks per customer rates, meaning they're not clicking around and shopping around or browsing as much. The lower purchase intent search terms, you're going to notice browse based, more ASINs are actually viewed, lower add to cart purchase rate, high clicks per customer rate. So let me give you an example of what this looks like. Here's two different search terms from that report. Cat litter mat, which is a higher purchase intent. 45% of the people that typed this in were just browsing and they were not clicking. Going 59 ASINs deep. So that's still on the first page. They're not getting to the second page. The average person who did click, clicked 2.42 times per shopper. And that turned out to be a 5.73 purchase percentage within that 24 hour period. So this is a much higher purchase intent compared to cat toys. Nearly 80% were just browsing, not even clicking, going 84 ASINs deep. So that is the second page. 3.6 clicks per shopper. So if they did click, which they were less likely to do in the first place, they're more likely to click more and only had a 2.81% purchase rate. So the reason I bring this up is it's all about strategy. Like I think this is great information to take and then figure out how can we target people who are browsing in a different way versus people who are high intent and more likely to purchase our product. Yes. The <clears throat> clicks per shopper is that they clicked that search term again and again, like they came back to it again. Yeah, so they that... bounced off and then clicked again. Because you could see the click rate um, per, I'll show you over here. Over here, you could see the click rate. Um, let's say like 30% are clicks, or 30% of people actually clicked. Then you can see how many times, um, let me show you here. So here's the click rate. So 55.95% of these people actually clicked. And then you could see the total count of clicks. So with that, you could see how many clicks per shopper. It's a little, little simple formula. But then keep in mind, some people might have gone to the product page and then clicked off from there and then shopped uh, or not purchased within the 24 hour period. All right. Um, all right. So next, once you have this information and you've perhaps identified opportunity keywords, you could target with some external traffic. Uh, this is a great way to start to boost results for certain opportunity keywords. And you can see here that a lot of traffic comes from off Amazon. Uh, through search. So this is for July from similarweb.com, July of 22. 22.43% of traffic came through search to Amazon. So that means people are probably searching something, you know, cat litter mat on Amazon. And then they're heading to Amazon, but they're doing it through search. So this is a good opportunity to capture traffic uh, and get some sales through that, but also improve your ranking pretty much before the holiday season. Okay, so getting ready for a splash. Once again, once we know those opportunities, we could also start to create some brand awareness campaigns. Of course, we could do that using sponsored brand, sponsored brand video, and sponsored display ads before peak season. So here's a quick tip, like we just spoke about before, leverage the browse-based keywords. We went over like the report, more browse-based keywords, you can leverage that. You could also look at something called the overlap report if you're looking to build out your audiences. This is available inside of DSP, and this shows us the affinity 
of overlap between audiences. So if you start to know like, okay, well, some of my audience is hanging out in this other like uh, ta taffy candy or snack food gifts, then you could start to do some category targeting and start to get some awareness to those other audiences inside of this, this report. Um, of one other quick tip, if you're on a budget, you could schedule your brand awareness campaigns when shoppers are most likely to be browsing, which according to the data is like later on in the evening. Um, just keep, be mindful though, like after, uh, I think it's 12 Pacific, everyone's budgets come back into play. So like cost per clicks actually go up because everyone who was out of budget is now in budget and there's more competition for a keyword. So this strategy here is more in the evenings to do your brand awareness. You, you can schedule your ads based on time because I remember they, they, they didn't have that for a while. Oh yeah, this is assuming you're using a software tool. So PPC Entourage could do this or lots of software tools can, can do that. All right, so here's a couple things just like general stuff about Q4. Limit your research in Q4. This is when there's gonna be a ton of traffic, ton of people shopping. This is not when you wanna do your research. You wanna do your research beforehand. So this could get very expensive very quickly if you're doing your research, like we call it ACOS scraping, uh, maybe broad match campaigns, which I do want, I do think broad match campaigns are still pretty good, but um, like testing out new keywords, this is not the season to be doing that. You would wanna probably do that beforehand and, getting, and get ready for the season. Uh, the other thing, avoid generic keywords like gifts for men that could get very expensive very quickly. What you could do is go back into the search term uh, query report and look for giftable keywords and then target those keywords from last year. Or if you know um, a giftable keyword that's more related to your niche, you could target that instead. Like search, like uh, beef jerky gifts for men or something like that that's a little bit more specific to what you're actually selling. But going after that, it's just gonna cost a lot of money. So we don't go there. Um, the other thing you could do, you could try to search for gift in the new Amazon audience section for sponsored display. All you have to do is go over here and search gift and there's 45 different potential opportunities based on the product that you're selling. Um, it may or may not match, may not be worth it, but you can give it a shot and see if there's any, any direct uh, matches there. All right, important, views remarketing. So now there's gonna be Prime Day coming up in October. This is an opportunity to retarget those shoppers during Q4, um, you could do that using views remarketing. You can go back, you know, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Purchases remarketing, you can go back 180 days, 360 days. But it's really cool because now we can retarget to our audience who landed on our page but didn't convert. Super important. Um, seven days works really well, 14 days, 30 days. You want to test it out and see which one works the best. All right, so now Chelsea spoke about this, so I am not gonna go into this in detail, but 100% on aligning the ad spend with inventory and stock out. There's no sense in going out, like spending all your profits on uh, marketing if you're gonna go out of stock. So be mindful of that if you're going out of stock that, hey, maybe you can be more profitable if you didn't spend your money on marketing. So Chelsea did a great job at explaining that before. And here's another thing, low on budget, consider day parting. There's a really good um, podcast on this from the Ad Advance guys. And it was really cool because basically after 12 o'clock Pacific time, everyone's budget came back on. So it actually had the highest cost per clicks with the lowest conversion rate. So the argument for day parting is turn your ads back on when there's less competition and also when there's um, less, more people converting, like the, around eight o'clock. So at like eight in the morning, Eastern, five Pacific, the conversion rates start to really go up. And then they start to tailor off and slowly go down throughout the day. And then around eight o'clock at night is when the conversion rates are pretty low. There's a lot of people more, that are more browsing. There's less competition because lots of your competitors have gone out of budget. So the cost per clicks are actually much lower later on in the day. So that's, that's an argument for, for day parting if you're low on budget since things are getting much more expensive and more competitive. Can you repeat the, the hours again? Yeah, so five, so five o'clock um, Pacific time, which is eight Eastern, that's, that's when the conversion rates start to improve. So they're really low earlier in the morning. They start to improve, they're actually at their peak around eight to 10 o'clock in the morning, that's Eastern time. 
Um, and then they start to slowly go down over time. The cost per clicks, though, are highest in the morning time when there's the most people that are competing, even though the, the conversion rates are super low at that point. But then they start to ramp up around 8 o'clock, then slowly start to go down throughout the day. Uh, but cost per clicks also start to slowly go down as well because there's less people competing. And then there's like a certain sweet spot towards the end of the day where there's a great opportunity for brand awareness because the cost per clicks are a little bit cheaper and um, there's not as many people competing for the, cost, the terms. All right, so balancing your budget. This is a great report, highly underutilized report where you can see which campaigns are doing really well and you can see what the recommended budget is to stay in budget for the entire day. So you can see some of these campaigns are doing well, but they're only in budget for 96% of the day. Go to Amazon and check this out. Then you can increase your budget to parts of the day. And one other thing, please don't forget to lower your budget on the 22nd because once the ability to get uh, shipments by Christmas is over, the budgets, you know, Amazon's, the, the ACOS is going to go through the roof. Things are going to get way more expensive. People aren't going to be shopping or converting quite as much. So make sure you lower your budget on the 22nd. Just be mindful of that because ACOS could go through the roof and a lot of sellers waste a lot of money. And I'll, I'll explain kind of, kind of why that happens in a second. Of October or November? This is of uh, December. 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 Yeah. All right. So also, think tacos. Super important. Um, tacos, does everyone know what that is? Okay, well, I, I consider, I call it also ad spend margin impact. So this is the um, impact that our advertising dollar has on our um, profitability. So it's on a, you can look at this on a campaign level, or you could also look this at, at an ASIN level as well. How much money am I spending on advertising for this ASIN, and what is the impact on that advertising on the profitability of that ASIN? So if this gets to be like 20, 25%, it's likely going to be too high and that's eating away at your margins. In this example, it's actually too low. There's an ad spend margin impact of 3%. So this tells me that there's probably some opportunities that are not being utilized. That could be an ad type that's not being utilized, sponsored brand, sponsored brand video, sponsored display. But the point is, that's a very low ad spend margin impact. In my opinion, not as good as it could be. But once again, just look at this on a campaign level and also, I'm sorry, a, a, a whole account level and also an ASIN level to see how you're doing overall. Make sure you're not um, spending too much on advertising to get a sale. All right, so now analyze and organize. Super important to do this now. Um, everything is magnified in Q4. So if something's not performing now, there's gonna be a lot more traffic in Q4 and it's gonna probably not perform well in Q4 as, as well. So that means you're probably gonna spend four times more on that mistake if you don't clean it up now and you have the opportunity to do that uh, before the traffic really starts to increase. This is really important because the good things are magnified and the bad things are magnified. So <clears throat> consider modifying your bids. Now, after Black Friday, there's obviously a lot more traffic. I, I actually changed this slide because I suggested raising your bids, but I would consider modifying your bids. It's gonna be different for every brand. The reason why the bids go up so much this is Amazon's 2021 edition email of like spend a lot of money on Amazon ads. Does everyone remember <coughs> these emails? Has everyone gotten these emails? <laughs> yeah, it's every year for like the last five years, it's a new version of make sure you raise your budgets, make sure you raise your bids. Oh, and do the up and down modifier because that could increase it by 100%. Um, and then make sure you don't go out of budget. So that's great, but unfortunately, a lot of sellers are doing this blindly and just raising everything, which makes everything more competitive. So you're probably gonna have to spend more to, to just compete. You know, it's a very competitive niche. So consider monitoring your results and then going and raising your bids from there. This is really, really helpful, part of like cleaning up your act before Q4. Death by a thousand paper cuts. The, we have a tool inside of Entourage called the Negative Word Finder. And what this does is it defines the commonalities between all of the search terms that have not been linked to a sale. So let's say 90% of your unprofitable clicks are coming from a group of search terms and that's costing you X amount of dollars. What the tool will do is find the individual words within all of those different search terms. So there could be thousands of search terms. We'll find the individual words that are common in those words, in those search terms, 
and then show you that those words have never been linked to a profitable sale. It's crazy. Like, I sold pet products and the word cigarette came up. So I was like, okay, I don't need that. So I do a negative phrase match. Now, anytime somebody searches for something with cigarette related to pets, I'm not getting visibility, I'm not getting spent. So it's important to do this because it could knock out a lot of those search terms that are just bleeding a lot of uh, wasted ad spend. So you could do this with a pivot table as well, if you know how to do it, I, I don't know. This is what it looks like in Entourage. The word furniture coming up, every time the word furniture came up, it led to no sales. 16 unprofitable clicks, here's the wasted ad spend. You could do a negative phrase match. All right, so next, outwitting your competition. So if your competition is spending a ton on ads, well, one thing that you can do is you can piggyback off of that ad spend by targeting them with various ads on the product detail page. Here we have an example of sponsored product ads, sponsored display ads, targeting this expensive creatine powder. So that's one opportunity to piggyback if you can't afford to go after these really super high cost per click keywords. Another thing is, I mean, how many people send gifts on Amazon? I do, all the time. Like to people I can't see, I'll put it in a gift bag and I'll send it so they have something nice to open. This could help substantially improve your conversion rate because if you have the ability to do a gift, then people are going to probably choose you over somebody who's not gonna do that, who doesn't have this ability. So enabling gift options, there's a couple of steps you have to go through, but it's pretty straightforward to do that. And when you do this, now people can actually gift your product but they could also like put in the address of that person and there's a whole thing, it makes, they make it very simple to actually send a gift. So that's a pretty cool thing to improve conversion rate. Next thing, defend your turf. Um, of course, the more space that you take up on your listing, the better. There's like a thousand ways for you to lose traffic on your own listing through different ads, through all these competing priorities. So the more you can defend your turf, the better. Um, that would be with you know, different types of ads like we spoke about before. Bundles is basically like free sponsored display ads. If you set up bundles, it takes up a good portion of the, of the product page and it's really close to, I think it might even be top above fold. So that's a really good way to do it. Um, easy to do, easy to set up. You could also make giftable bundles. You could also take those bundles and then you can make a holiday gift bundle and use a sponsored brand ad and actually have an actual like giftable item with a sponsored brand ad. It's like a little hack right there. Of course, you can do videos and lives. Um, fill out as many more product details as possible. The premium A plus and the brand story we already covered. All that's gonna help to improve your conversion rate and also just get more coverage on your page. All right, next with Outwitch your competition. Here's a pretty good example if you have a deal, a lightning deal that's running. You can promote your holiday deals with sponsored brand ads and a save headline. So the headline here was outdoor lighted zombie, but maybe something like great savings on holiday decorations. And then you have a limited time deal that you're running. The point of this is you can actually, if you look at Amazon's rules and regulations regarding savings, you could actually put that word in the, uh, in the headline itself. And you come up with some, some neat headlines to help promote your deals. All right, um, holiday themed posts. So this is important. Look at this, this is from Hershey. You can get an example of what they were doing. This is still free. So I'd recommend doing this one to two times per day and doing as many, um, not just holiday themed posts, but just getting in the habit of doing posts on a regular basis because it is free traffic and it does look very nice and takes up a lot of space. Man, I went through that fast. Okay, final tip. Um, a store spotlight ads using the most giftable categories and holiday headline plus targeting more broad or gift keywords. All right, so here's an example of a company, Treetopia, who's got three different categories on their storefront page, green trees, pink, and silver. So these are different options. Now imagine you had three giftable categories on your page. You could have them right over here with a giftable headline, targeting more broad or gift keywords. Um, once again, you don't want to be very specific with this type of, of ad because you're trying to, to, to sort of like cast a wider net to see what people might be interested in with the three different categories. So this is one more opportunity. All right, I um, just want to give you guys the opportunity. We actually just launched the uh, Black Diamond Audit, which we are giving away for the first, well, 
for giving it away uh, for the first few weeks. So I want to give everyone the opportunity here to get their free black diamond audit. This is an extensive branding audit and also uh, advertising audit where we look at all of your campaigns. We do what's called a SWOT analysis to determine what's working, what's not working to help you get ready for uh, Q4. So I'm going to give you a QR code and you guys are more than welcome to, uh, to sign up for the black diamond audit. Also any links that we put on this presentation um, including all the Canva downloads and the links to the video builder and the uh, headline creator, you can find over here.